disciples were excited. People were excited. They want to join us on, on events, and they're just, it was just a, a good time. So I want to pray that God will just continue in that in that in that excitement, Amen, and that people will be refreshed, Amen. I want to pray for the surrounding churches, uh, Riverside, Rialto, San Bernardino. And of course, here in Rupa Valley, that God will continue to help us, uh, continue to expand, continue to help us grow, amen, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, amen. That God will continue to just part of spirit, give us strength, amen, uh, open up our hearts and minds. want to pray for the needs of this church, amen. I want to pray for each individual in this place, that God will just bring his healing hand upon us, that God will touch us, that God will bring an anointing in our lives. That God, that that you will listen to the still soft voice of God and hear and hear His calling upon your life, Amen. You know that that you were saved for a purpose. God has a plan for your life, yeah. Amen. So I want to pray that 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 God begins to speak to your heart, Amen. That that you begin to see this plan that God has for your life. That God begins to use you. That puts you in positions and places where He can be glorified, Amen. That's all God wants is to be glorified, Amen. So, you know, I want to pray that God will just help us, amen, uh, amen, this this, uh, this 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 night, amen. So, you know what, this evening, amen, you can trust in God. It doesn't matter what it is you're going through. If you need healing, you can trust in God. If you need a financial breakthrough, you can trust in God, amen. We've trusted in a lot of things, a lot of our, we've trusted, you know, we trusted in financial breakthrough from our friends and, and, and our buddies in the street, amen, that let us down all the time, amen. Why don't we trust in God, amen? We tried everything else, right? Just trust in God, amen. So let's cry out to God. Let's worship God this this evening as we open up our prayer, amen. So let's let's uh, let's worship God. opportunity, God, to come to your house, God, to hear your word, your message, God. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you just help us, God. God, that you just speak to our hearts, God. You open up our hearts and our minds, God, tonight, God. God, that you change our hearts, you change our minds, God, that you just continue, God, to build us, God. God, that we would be the men and women you have called us to be, God, reaching the lost, God. God, that you would use our lives, God. We thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You take time to greet some of this, this evening. Some announcements this uh, this evening. Amen. We can find our seats. Uh, so I'll remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at ten, every Wednesday at seven. Amen. Don't forget to uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, catch up on services on YouTube. Amen. Send them to somebody. Text a message to somebody. Let God, Amen. Use the message to change lives. Amen. Also, returning October the sixth. Amen. We're going to be returning with our Sunday night fights. Every first and third Sunday night um, of the month, amen, so we're going to return that, amen, I'm already working on some guest preachers to come in for those nights um, from outside the area, so we're going to have some really good times, amen, so uh, uh, October the 6th, we'll return to our regular schedule of Sunday night fights, uh, don't forget, November 22nd, 23rd is the Women's Conference in El Central, California, amen, it's a great time, amen, you got some powerful women of God on the screen, they're going to be they're going to be ministering to the women, so I want to encourage you to be a part of this, Amen. Um, also, uh, we do our corporate service every other month, every every other month. So this coming Sunday is our corporate service, Amen. This Sunday, 
It will be in the San Bernard, at the San Bernardino Church, amen. They got a they got a guest preacher. It's gonna be a good time, amen. Um, everybody's gonna everybody's talking about being there because everybody we just got done with the rally. Everybody's excited. So this Sunday, this Sunday evening, we will be at the San Bernardino Church at six o'clock, amen. Um, I'll have this. I'll have the um, the address on the on the slideshow on the screens, amen. And if you need it, we can always send it to you. But this Sunday evening, we're going to have our regular service here in the morning. But Sunday evening, we're going to have a special service in San Bernardino and Riverside, Rialto, San Bernardino, Rupa Valley. We'll all be taking part of this. If you haven't been to any of our other churches, amen, it's good to go and see, amen, the other churches, what they're doing, amen. Uh, San Bernardino is, is working on their building. They're trying to, to improve it and, and get things going, amen. They're, they're getting out of the old and into the new, so... It's going to be a part of what's going on out there, amen. So that's this Sunday, corporate service for the Inland Empire. It's the Inland Empire corporate services this Sunday at 6. I don't know if you heard me, but it's this Sunday at 6, amen. In San Bernardino, this Sunday at 6. We will have our regular service at 10 o'clock here. This Sunday, 6 o'clock, San Bernardino, amen. So I want to hear, well, I don't know what Pastor said. I said it a hundred times, Amen. Amen. Uh, so these are the announcements we're going to lift up an offering. So let's worship God as worship comes forward. Amen. You know what? This uh, this evening you give with an open heart. You allow God to bless you. Amen. You know what? God, God's going to do something special in your life. You know what? Uh, uh, somebody was, was asking me about giving earlier. And, uh, and I kind of explained to him the principle of giving and how how it affects the rest of our lives, amen, when it comes to giving. And and you know what? Uh, you can never outgive God, you know. Bring your tithe. There's a reason why, if you look on the screen, it says bring your tithe. The reason why we say bring your tithe is because the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, 9, and 10, it's the last, it's the last uh, book in the Old Testament. Where, where the prophet Malachi, he receives a word from God and says, Will a man rob God? He says, Yes, you have robbed thee, and what have we robbed thee? He says, In tithes and offerings. He says, For you are cursed with a curse. He says, Bring all your tithes into the storehouse, and prove me now herewith that I will not open up the windows of heaven and part a blessing that you, can, you cannot have room enough to receive. Now, if you're wondering why do I have it memorized, amen, it's not because I'm a pastor. It's easy to think that because I'm a pastor, all they want is money, amen. Uh, that was the first scripture I ever memorized. And, and I memorized it because the scripture changed my life. Amen. Uh, I've been faithful in giving my tithe. You know, as a pastor, I, I work a full-time job. And I work a full-time job. Okay. Well, I get paid for a full-time job. <laughs> That's, yeah. And, and I, I give tithe off. I give, a, I give what's, what, what belongs to God. And the guy was asking me, you know, you know about, about it earlier. And I said, well, no, a tithe is what belongs to God. It's, it's right. It belongs to God. I think we all agree with that. It belongs to God. The Bible says that in the Old Testament, they would give a tenth of their of their flock unto the Lord. Amen. They would give the best of their flock, not just the the, the, the ones that were limping, the lambs that were limping. They would give them the best. And so I said, okay, so you give it like, but the hard part for people to understand is that when you give your tithe, all you, what we've done is we've showed God you can trust us what you've let us borrow. Amen. And we give it back to God. Amen. Our off, our giving doesn't start until we actually give beyond our tithe. And he was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I go, well, if you think about it, our tithe belongs to God. If it's, a tithe is holy and acceptable to God. It's what belongs to God. The Bible says it belongs to God. But when we give beyond our tithe, we're giving an offering. And one thing that I one thing I, I, I was mentioning to him, this was just a conversation I had with a coworker. And I and I what I mentioned to him was was this. I go, do you realize I go like in our church we don't we don't pray for those who give and those who who don't give because it'd be almost a waste of prayer. What are you going to pray for those who don't give? Because God 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 blesses the cheerful giver. You you everybody can give, you know. And I ain't saying this because I need we need money. That's not what I'm saying for. You got to understand the principles of giving. Everybody can give, and the Bible says the widow gave three mites, and three mites wasn't wasn't anything. So it has nothing to do with dollar amount. Nothing to do with amount, dollar amount. Matter of fact, God is so amazing that he created giving to be equal amongst everyone. What that means is a tithe is a tithe. So my tithe is the same as 
as Angel's tithe. It's the same as, as Sister Maria's tithe. It's the same as Cynthia's tithe. All of our tithes are the same because a tithe is just 10%. It doesn't change. It's 10% across the board. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the honoring of God. It's the obedience is where we bring it. Amen. And if you ever want God to move in your finances, here's a key. If you ever want God to move in your finances, you got to let him in your finances. Amen. Amen. You don't let him in your finances, how can you ever ask God, God, bless me with more money so that I can give? The answer is simple. Why would God give you more if you're not faithful with what you have? The Bible says he was faithful with little, be faithful with much. You imagine that? Be faithful with the little so God can give you much. God will give you an abundance. I'm telling you, um, I've seen God give blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon people who I've seen break into the principle of giving. And it just explodes in their life, you know, where God just really does break loose, where overtime is no longer needed and all that extra stuff, man. Amen. Right now is a good time to tie because I just got done hearing one of the presidential candidates saying that, that one of his goals is to t uh, stop taxing overtime. Amen. Can you imagine that? I'm going to have to go down for salary and go back to overtime. Amen. <laughs> so that, if that can happen, amen. You want the minute, you, 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 you a man or woman of God? Be faithful in your giving so God can bring down the blessing. Amen. Amen. So allow God to, to bless your, your giving. Allow God to bless the offering. Allow God into your finances. And say, God, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trusting in you. And, and the Bible says, and prove me now herewith. What that means, it says, God's saying, if you don't believe me, try me. Test me. It says, test me. If you don't believe me, test me with it. Try giving what you're supposed to give and test me with this, what the Bible says. Amen. So, be faithful in your tithes, amen. Bring your tithe, give an offering, support missions, amen. We're sending out our missions uh, uh, money this, this month. One thing, if, you, if you've been coming to this church for a while, you know where our money goes, amen. And if you don't, I'll open up the books and show you. So that's not a problem, amen. You'll be like, how in the heck do you survive? <laughs> but, but you can see where our money goes. There's two churches in South America that are surviving because we've committed to them for the past five years amen so we what comes in we get right back out to the ministry amen to get the kingdom of god going forward we can touch the world for jesus i preach what i live amen so you give with an open heart you allow god to bless you amen so let's bow our hearts amen as uh, brother angel bless the gift and the giver father god we ask that you bless these tithes and these offerings that are brought before you this evening god we ask that you bless those that continue to give faithfully into your kingdom lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, coming in with the door. What a mighty God we serve. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, coming in with the door. Amen. I don't pull. When I say pull, I mean I don't drag offerings too often. Amen. But one of the things is, is that we gotta, we got, we as a body of believers, the body of Christ, need to understand what the principle of giving is. So every once in a while, you'll hear me give you a little history lesson on it. Amen. And those of you who do pay your tithes. And God has moved in your life. Listen to me. Those of you who do pay your tithes and if God has moved in your life, amen, when take time to share those testimonies because, because God wants to bless his people. A lot of times people aren't getting blessed because they don't know. You know that, 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 that the devil wants to attack your finances so bad that there's even churches out there that don't lift up offerings no more. And that's, and that's, that's a direct attack from the devil. They don't lift up offerings. They 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 don't even put the basket in the. They don't even put the basket through the seats anymore. They'll put the basket in the back or a box in the back and say, you know, you can give if you want to give, and they leave it as that. But then when you do that, you're robbing the people of the opportunity of being blessed. I remember. I mean, this has nothing to do with my Bible study. I remember. Um, we had a need at, in in Rialto when we were going to the Rialto church. We needed new sound equipment. So I'm talking to my pastor and. and and I'm figuring out the sound equipment we need. He says, go get, go make a shopping list and figure out what we need to get. And I said, okay. So I go figure it all out. Then I tell him, okay, this is what it's going to cost. 
And he goes, okay. He goes, you know what? Give me about about five weeks, and I'll have the money for it. Because you know, you need to save church money to do it. I go for what? He goes, so we can save. I go, no. I go, just lift up the offering to the church. It's a need of the church. Lift it up to the church. I go, I want to give to this. I want to give so we can have new sound equipment. He goes, really? I said, yeah. I go, if you don't lift it up, you're robbing me of my blessing. Imagine that. If I don't let you guys know about, about the principle of giving, I'm actually stealing from you. I'm taking away the opportunity for you to find out the blessings of God in your finances and how he can move in your in your job and, and, and bless your hands and just, just the fruits of your labor. The Bible talks about all that. So if you ever want to study on it, let me know. But it, it God, it, it does work. Amen. It really does. So we're gonna we're gonna continue. We're gonna finish our fundamental Bible study tonight. Amen. And we've been talking about prayer. But as we talk about prayer, there's something, Amen, that uh, uh, as we get into uh, that's important as as we pray. So we we know we need to pray, right? We know we need to pray. But to be to be men and women of prayer, we need to be men and women who who don't fight with the overhead. Hold on. Let me try it again. There it goes. We need to be men and women who pray, but in order to pray, okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. And I'm, and I'm looking for answers. When we get saved and we accept Jesus Christ, what, what's taking place? It's, it's a simple answer. Simple. It's not something real theological, but simple. Jesus Christ died on the cross for what? Okay, but what part of us? I hear, I hear it. I hear it. Our sins, right? Jesus Christ died for our sins. So now answer me this. When you accept Jesus Christ, all your sins, are they washed away? Well, yeah, all of our sins are washed away, right? But does that mean that we're not sinning still? We still sin, right? The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? No one's righteous, no, not one. This is These are scriptures. This is what the Bible tells us. So, so, how often are we supposed to repent according to the word of God? Okay. Daily, okay? We are to repent daily. So if we're going to repent daily, why do we have to repent daily? Because we sin every day. We sin every day. It's pretty simple, right? We sin every day. So since we sin every day, we should, we should be repenting daily, right? Now, does it mean that, that, that now, now there's a difference when it comes to sin, Okay. Sin is, there's two, there's, there's two types of sin here, okay? We'll make it simple. I'll just break it down into two types of sin. There's sin that we knowingly do, okay? We knowingly know sin, right? Where it's sin, we know it's sin. We know we should not touch that sin. We know that that sin is bad for us, but yet we do it. So that's, that's one sin. Then there's other sin. They're kind of passive. They're kind of the things that, you know, human nature, we, you know, we, we, we laugh at something we probably shouldn't have laughed at because we're still working things out in our salvation or, or, or we think certain way. We, maybe we get angry at something we probably shouldn't have got angry at, right? You know, you're driving down the street and somebody cuts you off and, and you, wave high, you, wave high, you wave high to them with one finger, amen. You shouldn't be doing that, right? That's something you shouldn't be doing. Right. And, and I always refer to that as there was, there was a lady a couple years ago who did that in Orange County. She was driving down the freeway. She was taking her, her 10-year-old kid, son, to, to school. And somebody cuts her off. And she and she waves at him with her middle finger. Okay? These people who cut her off, they actually go back around, come back around her, and then they start unloading their gun into the car. Yep. Killing the 10-year-old little boy. Turns out, she was a Christian. She went to church. Right? So these things happen. Right? Christian, this thing's happened. This is why it's important to understand this, right? We are not going to be, we're not going to be sinless, but we're going to sin less, right? We're not going to be sinless. We're going to have sin in our lives. It's, it's our human nature. It's who we are. But that doesn't mean because it's our human nature gives us an excuse to do it, right? 
To him to know to do good and does not do it, to him that is what? Sin. That's what the Bible says. Paul says, for him to know who to do good and does not do it, to him that is sin. So you know what to do. It when it comes to drinking, drugs, cussing, we know right from wrong. We understand that. We get it. That, we're not kids. We get it. We understand what's right, what's wrong. So the obvious sins, right? But then there's the then there's the things that we're that man, God just dealing with me. Man, I got that anger issue. I believe it or not, which you probably can't believe this, I have an anger problem. I was mad. Now, I looked like a happy guy. Which is I'm being sarcastic here. I was an I was an, I was an angry person. I grew up angry. I grew up. The world was against me growing up. Right. That's just my mentality. So I was an angry person. Right. And I didn't care if I I, I would destroy you with my with my mouth before I would destroy you with my hands. I just who I was. Right. That's the, so. So today somebody tell me something at work, and yes I did work today. So today somebody told me something at work, and they said. Regarding how I deal with people, saying, and it's amazing when you get mad because you're because you are so patient, right? That is like one of the hugest compliments everybody's ever, anybody's ever given me, because I'm not very patient. I I'm, I have like like I can do woodwork, right? I can sand, do all woodwork. I can do I can do it. I get it. I understand it. I know measurements. I know angles. I, I get all that. But man, I just don't have the patience to wait for that final finish. You know the the fine sanding and and the and the stain work. I did the door right there, right? I, I didn't build the door, but I, I brought a raw door. I sanded it all down, stained and varnished it. That was a miracle. I usually don't have enough patience to finish that. I just, uh, you know, just yeah. I'd rather just destroy it when we're there, turn about when we first got this door turn out wall. Uh, Brother Angel was running through walls. He thought he was in Afghanistan or something. Mm -hmm. That's that's my patience, right? So there's things you guys, you guys, you follow me so far. There's things, you know. What are some things that you deal with? The things that you have to deal with, and be honest, be honest about. It. What are some things that you have to deal with that you know that we got to get rid of? What are some things? Because I guarantee, you, whatever it is, other people are dealing with it. But it's it it helps when one is honest about it because it helps the other person know that I'm not alone in this. So what are some things that 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 you have to deal with? Come on, come on, saints. Angels, not angel, but angels. <laughs> what are some things that you have to deal with? That that you know it's something that you need God to help you with. Make my daughter go to school. I, it's something that I didn't get. I didn't have time to, to deal with. So when you say make your daughter go to school, that's her. That's her problem. It's yours because you're a mother. But are you getting upset at her over it? Okay, so the anger. So it's an anger issue. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? That, that's honest, right? What else? Anyone else? What do you need help with, Alex? Everything. <laughs> well, that's honest. I get angry easy. I get angry for no reason at people that don't deserve it. Okay. What about you, little man? What do you need help with? Stay awake? <laughs> Can you help it? No? Patience. Patience. That's legit, right? Is, is anger and patience things that we got to deal with? These are things that, that cause us, right? And why do we got to deal with these things? Because if we don't deal with them, they escalate. Right? But anger, right? Anger. <laughs> There's a little story to that. At work, we have we all have trucks, right? He has a truck. We get to take home. I haven't, I haven't driven to work in 16 years, and 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 our trucks have cameras. When you do certain things, the camera goes off and it tells on you. Oh. <laughs> Angel's problem is that I'm his boss, so when the camera goes off, it tells me, and then I have to deal with it with our corporate office. Oh. <laughs> you gotta drive like a granny, huh? So you gotta you gotta drive. So like me, if you guys ever see me drive, I'm pretty slow and patient. That's that's where my patience actually where my patience come from, having to learn how to drive, because I have to learn to be patient in my driving. Traffic don't really bother me too much anymore. 
It really doesn't. It bothers Martha when we're going places and there's traffic. It really infuriates her. She's always in a hurry to get somewhere where we don't need to be. You know, like you need to get. You know, like when you need to be somewhere and you're gonna be out. You're gonna be late. So you want her to get there? I get that. But sometimes we're just going somewhere. No time frame. No nothing. And you gotta get there now. Right. <laughs> so, but these types of things, right? These types of things, what do they do? They draw, they draw emotions. They cause you to act out. They cause you to do things. They, uh, the, 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 it, these are realistically, these are small sins that can really escalate to a very large one, right? Because you, you, see, you see the video reels on social media where people get off cars and go to the other car and they start beating people up and all that kind of stuff. That, that stuff happens. I remember one time my brother... Somebody cut him off, made him mad, so he did that pull back, pull back around, and follow that guy all the way home. The guy got when that guy got off the car, he went out with a bat and broke every window, light, and everything in that car, and then called the guy out of the house and beat him with the bat because he had anger issues. Little ones. That's the kind of stuff I did. That's the stuff I grew up with. Okay, so so that's why it's important why we've been talking about prayer, the fundamentals. If you're gonna make it. You gotta be people who pray. If you're not praying, you're not you're not gonna make it. You have to pray. You, if you don't pray, what are you doing with your time? Because whatever it is that you're doing with your time, other than prayer, is the very thing that's pulling you down that causes you to need more prayer. We gotta spend time in prayer, right? Now, when we pray, we got it's something that we do. So we gotta work on being that man and the woman of God that God has called us to be. So we're going to read, when I say we, I mean me, because it's a little long for the screen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now I want to remind you, the book of Romans was written, it's, an actual, it's actually a letter that was written by the Apostle Paul, right, to the church in Rome, Okay. To the Romans. Remember, most of the New Testament, you know, the thing the Apostle Paul wrote like two-thirds of the New Testament, they're letters that were written, they're epistles. They call them epistles. They're actual letters that he wrote while in prison, most of them, to churches. So like the, the book of Ephesians, it's the book, it's a letter written to the church in Ephesus to the Ephesians, which are the people of Ephesus that were in that church. So when you read the Bible and you see these things that are going on, it's not talking about those people outside. Because those people outside don't read the Bible. It's actually talking to the people in the church. So when you read the Bible, like you go into to, to, uh, 1 and 2 Corinthians, and you start reading, you know, in the, for, it says, for the kingdom of heaven was without, and it gives all these lists of sins. Paul's writing to the church because he's hearing that all these sins are taking place in the church. But we read it and we think it's the people outside. No, it's the people inside the church, right? The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, talks about the way a man is treating a woman and the way a woman is treating a man. He's not talking about marriages outside of the church. He's talking about the way the, the way the godly marriages are being, being performed inside the, the church. So when you're reading it, you can't read the Bible as in, oh, that, well, yeah, that's what the world is. That's what the world is. That's what the world is. Okay, no, 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 no. That's what the church is. That's why we always got to be cleaning off hearts and, and checking who we are. So so with that in mind, Paul's writing to the church in Rome, to the Romans, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service verse 2 this is what Paul is saying remember he's reading he's writing this to the church he says and do not be conformed to this world I mean don't 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 change your thought process to this world don't don't be don't compromise because this is what's going on in the world okay he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So Paul's writing to the church and he's telling them, he's telling them, and this is this is my 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 one of my favorite scriptures. He says, he says, and present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and ex and acceptable unto God, right? So we'll break that down real quick. He says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, right? What was a sacrifice in, in the Bible? What was a sacrifice? What, what, what would be sacrificed in the Bible? Come on, what would be sacrificed? You guys know that. You know the answer. Is your hand up or are you scratching your head? Or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. <laughs> What's a sacrifice? Something that... In the Bible. In the Bible. What was a sacrifice? Something you give up. Well, something you give up, but that's, that's a modern sacrifice. What? A clean and unblemished lamb. Okay, they would sacrifice an animal. Right, this is what was to happen. Adam, I mean uh, 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 Abraham, he sacrificed. He sacrificed. Maybe Abel, remember Abel and Cain, the the, the brothers, the two brother, the first two brothers of the first family of the world. Right, one sacrificed fruits and vegetables, and the other one sacrificed a lamb. God did was upset and didn't accept. Cain sacrificed because it wasn't it wasn't according to what was supposed to have happened. He gave just the fruits and vegetables. He was supposed to sacrifice a lamb, like his brother did. And God was pleased with the fresh aroma of that sacrifice because the blood of the lamb, the life of the lamb was was given to God. The life of the lamb was given to the God, to, to, to God. Now, do we still sacrifice animals? No. What was the final sacrifice? What was the final sacrifice? Jesus. Jesus Christ was the final sacrifice, right? Who sacrificed him? God the Father, right? God the Father sacrificed Jesus Christ, his only son, on the cross by the shedding of his blood, giving of life, which was, the, which was identical to what used to happen in the Old Testament. So, the Bible says, present your body as a living sacrifice, right? Which means there was a death that took place when there was a sacrifice. Does that mean we're going to we're gonna go die? No. It means that we're, we are going to die to certain things. We're going to die to self. We're going to die to the things that are pulling us to the directions that we shouldn't be going. We're going to die to the temptations that, we, that we're falling into all the time, right? It says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy, right? Holy. What's holy? What's holy? What's holy? God, right? <laughs> holy and acceptable. It's heavenly. Holy is heavenly. Holy is godly, right? Holy and acceptable unto God, right? Cain, vegetables, not much thought. Abel sacrificed a lamb, first fruits. God blessed it. This is holy and acceptable. Not holy and acceptable. Holy and acceptable. Makes sense? He says, sacrifice, be a living sacrifice. You're no longer asked to be dead and be killed, but you're to be a living sacrifice, which means every day you're living for God. Every day you're turning from the things that you know you shouldn't be doing, right? But what's the most amazing part of this whole thing, he says, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, and ends verse 1 with, which is, which is your reasonable service, okay? Which is your reasonable service. Anybody want to tell me what which is your reasonable service actually means? Give it to me in layman's terms and a simple, a simple sentence. Something you should already be doing. Something you should already be doing, right? Which is your reasonable service? Reason When they put which is your reasonable service, what that means is this is what you should be doing. It's not extra. It's not extra extraordinary. You're not doing something more than anyone else. It's... We're not asking you to do something that you sh that that nobody else does. The Bible says it's your reasonable service to li be a living sacrifice. It's 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 something that should be taking place in our lives. It's something that is normal for a Christian to do, to live a life holy and acceptable as a living sacrifice for God and saying, God, I'm no longer going to do this because I'm going to look at you. It's reasonable. It's your reasonable service. God's, it, God's saying, I'm not asking you to do nothing extra extraordinary. If anything, I'm asking you to do something that's only going to help you. Yeah. 
It's your reasonable service. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay. Then he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What do you guys think? Do not be do not be conformed to this world. Right? Do not be conformed. Do not be shaped to the things of this world. When we say world, what are, what is what is when the Bible talks about the world, what is it talking about? Sin. Okay? Do not be conformed to this world. Or do not be conformed to the sins that are within this world. Right? But it says, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Why? Why do we got to renew our mind? So we don't think. You already got that covered. Your mind controls your heart, right? But but what do you mean? Like, we don't, so we think differently. You know, we so don't. you think differently. Okay, but why do we got to think differently? Why do you, why do we have to think differently? I had this conversation with somebody at work earlier today, and yes, I did work. Mm -hmm. We think like everybody else, we're going to be sinners. We're going to be, be sinners, right? Yeah. Okay. So the renewing of our mind, expected. right? We need, to be, we need to renew our mind. You know why? It took 52 years of my life to think the way I think. It did. It took 52 years of my life to finally get to the thought process that I actually contain right now. Right? How many years of your life did it take? Because it took my entire life. When we give our lives to God, you know, you know when, when, when a baby is born, they're saved by grace because they don't know sin yet. But but there, there's something called the age of accountability, where a child will grow up and they have an age of accountability. Like right now, Carol's saved by grace. He's under he's under the covering of his father. He doesn't know sin the way we know sin. But there's gonna be a time where Carl's gonna get old enough to understand. Now, what age is that? Well, it depends on the individual. Everybody has a different mind growth, right? So it's going to be, and, and we're not in charge of that. That's between the individual and God, right? Now, when you give your life to God, you weren't an infant. You weren't born in this world being good. You weren't. The Bible, says, the Bible talks about us that we're born sinners. We were born naturally sinners. Why do you think babies don't need to learn? Don't you don't need to teach a, a baby the word mind? They're greedy from from birth, yeah, right? It's mine, mine to me, right? And when you try to take it from them, another if you get one little kid taking something from another little kid, what does the first little kid do? Bam. Right? You don't have to teach them that. They do that automatically. That's it's it's a simple, innocent little thing that happens, but that's the that's. That's the visual of sin in our life, right? So we were raised a certain way. I gave my life to God at 22. I felt like I felt like I was 52 at that at that age. Things I went through, right? And my mind was so stuck. It was so in, so encased in, into the life that I lived and the things that I did that I couldn't think any different. And when I was in those that life, I only thought everything. Every there was a time in my life that I believed that every single person on this earth did drugs. And if you told me you didn't, I'd call you a lie to your face, because you had to have. Because everyone around me did drugs. As I got older, got saved, and lived my life, and got a renewing of the mind, I realized not everybody's done drugs. There's people out there who have not done drugs. But the life that I live was hard for me to understand that there's actually people out there who never did drugs. That's why the Bible says, by the renewing of your mind, because your mind's gonna tell you that this is okay and that's not. Well, this is okay because I think of this. Why is this okay and, that's, and our mind's gonna mess us up? Well, it's legal, right? That doesn't make a difference. So is child molestation in Thailand. In Thailand. Does that mean we gotta go do that too? Right? No, right? So you got you got to understand. We got to renew our mind. We got we got to stop thinking the way we think, because the way we think got us into the problems that we were in, that made us turn our life to say, "Hey, I need a change. My life ain't going the way I should have. 
I think I need to change the way I think because the way I think got me into all this mess to begin with. The way I think got me in trouble. The way I think messed up my health. The way I think messed up messed up my life. The way I think got me addicted. The way I think got me got me got me busted. The way I think almost got me killed because the way we think. That's why Paul says by the renewing of your mind. He says, don't be conformed to this world. The world's going to come against us. There's churches, and I bring, remember, all this is written to the church. All this is written to the church. This isn't written to the people outside. The people outside ain't paying attention to this. All they do is pay attention to themselves. It's the people in the church. There's churches today that are conforming the way churches ran to appease people in the world. There's churches today that that they're mega churches that will have lobbies with TVs in them and show all the football games out in the lobby while church is going on. Because the problem the problem in the, in, in today's church is it's usually it's usually filled with more women than men, right? Are we are we uneven or even today? I think we're still I think the women's still number. Actually it's one, two, three. Five. There's no still. There's still no there's still more girls. Okay, so so what they did, what they've done, the mentality is this. Here's the mentality of, of putting the TVs up with the football games. Well, now the man will come to church as a family while the family goes inside. He can stay outside watching the game. But the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. Right? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What you thought was to be right probably isn't right. Right? What you thought was the right thing to do, it probably is not the right thing to do. You gotta know that it's okay that your mind wants to change the way you think. You need to understand that it's God working inside of us to, to get us to, to think differently. Right? One of these isn't that bad. Two of those isn't that bad. If I go as long as I look and I don't touch, no, 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 that's not the way it works. Those days are over. Those days are over. Those, those, those days got you in trouble. Don't be conformed to this world. Just because just because some dumb politician decided that we can do this now doesn't mean we should. It doesn't mean that. We still, we still are, we're still governed by the Bible. We're still governed by God. Right? Be renewed in the mind. And Paul says, it's our reasonable service. It's reasonable for us to do this, right? Why is it reasonable? It gives us eternal life. Why wouldn't it be reasonable? John 15, 18, 19. Who wants to read that? If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you're of the world, the world will love you as its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of this world, therefore the world hates you. Okay, the letters are white right here. Yeah. Who said that? Who said those words? Jesus Christ said those words. Okay? People are not going to understand why you don't want to do certain things, right? People are waiting for you to fall. People want you to get high again. People want you to come and, and hang out with them at the bar. You don't need to drink. We'll order you water. We'll get you a soda. Hang out at the bar with us. Mm -hmm. People won't understand it. People will come against you. People. My compadre, when I got saved, my compadre is the one who introduced me to my wife. And me and him were tight back in the days. We did all kinds of things together. And when when me and Martha started getting serious, which we did right away, he actually got he got upset and kind of jealous and just didn't want to hang out no more, right? If the world hates you, know that it hated me before he hated you. But today, I get messages from my father all the time. Oh, it's been almost 30 years now. But he's still reaching out because he's still paying attention. Hey, you know what? This stuff was real for him. He didn't just walk away. He's doing something that, that you know, well, this, there's, a, there's something more to this, right? But people won't agree with you. He says, if you were the world, the world would love you, right? The world would love you. If you were the world, if you were a drinker, the world would love you because you're a drinker. If you drink, I drink, we all drink. If you get high, the world will love you because you get high. You get high, get high, let's all get high, right? We'll sing the songs. We want to get high, right? That's just that's what it is. The world loves its own, right? But when you when you when you're different, when you're not conforming to the things that are going on, they're not going to like you too much. You're going to get opposition. 
But that's when you trust in God and know that you're going in the right direction. The Bible says all things work together for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Stay the course and understand that God works it out. God works it out because the very people that didn't understand why I dropped everything and did what I'm doing, 30 years later are still calling me or messaging me and asking me to pray for them because now they know what's real and what's not. Because they're still the same. They're still the same. Still doing the same things. Same things they were doing when we were in high school. Same things. Same things, right? Except they're doing it with their children now. They got their adult kids and they're doing it with them now. What, what, what good is that, right? Be transformed. Read one of the mic. Any questions? Any input? Okay. Uh, Philippians 3.20. I'll read it. Philippians 3.20. Why do we do this? Well, here's why. Philippians 3.20. Remember, Philippians are the people of Philippi. The city's called Philippi. The letter was written to the church in Philippi to the Philippians. Remember? We're, we're not called Americas. We're called Americans, Right? We're called, we're called Americans, we're not called Americas. We're all, he's in America. No, he's an American, right? She's an American. Same thing, Philippi, Philippians. Philippians 3.20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we do this? Because our citizenship is in heaven. We're no longer of this world. We're no longer part of, and and not, I don't want to. I, I don't want to say that and sound like we're like I'm crazy or some kind of weird thing, but the reality is we're citizens of heaven. Have you heard me at the at the rally? I said you got one purpose, one calling. <laughs> Everything else is a blessing. Being a pastor, that's a blessing. Being in music, that's a blessing. Being an usher, that's a blessing. Being a nurse worker, that's a blessing. But we all got the same calling, and that's to populate heaven. We're citizens of heaven. Populate heaven. That's what, that's what we're called to do, populate heaven. Any questions on that? Okay. Philippians 4, 4 through 7. And we're going to end with the scripture. The Bible says, 4, Philippians 4, 4 through 7, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Right? Listen to that. Let your gentleness be known to all men. Be kind, man. What was the, what, what was the biggest thing that we, that we all agreed on when we first started this? What's the thing that we seem to be that the common denominator that people have to deal with? Anger, right? A lot of it, you know, patience draws into anger. Everything, it all draws back into anger, right? But he says right here, he says, he says, let your gentleness be known to all men. Don't be, don't be so quick to anger. And, and verse six, it says, be anxious for nothing. What does that mean? Patience. You, don't be angry. Be, be, you be patient. Don't be anxious. Impatience draws anxiety. Right? Does that make sense to you? When you're impatient, you can get you can get anxious. Right? Like I said, when we go somewhere, it doesn't matter. We don't have an appointment. We don't need to be at a certain time, but Martha's in a hurry to get there. Right? It's impatience. Right? It's impatient. Right? It's impatient. It's impatient. And it draws anxiety. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, well, that draws anxiety. Right? But that's what we all do. Every, every one of us. We're all guilty of this in some way, shape, or form, just depending on what, what situation that draws it for us. We, we all get drawn on this for certain things. I get that when it comes to food. If food ain't done, I'm Right? Uh -huh. So it, it, we, all, we, all have our, we all have our things. But it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything's by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. All right? So be patient in the Lord. Give it to God in prayer. The things that are making you angry, give it to God in prayer. 
prayer and supplication is dedication, you know, surrenderance unto God. And be anxious for nothing. Say, you know what, God, I'm giving it to you. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be. It's, and it says that God, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, right? Surpasses means it's it's an understanding that you won't understand. You don't understand. It surpasses your understanding. You don't know how it works. You don't understand how it works. But no, it works. It surpasses all understanding, right? And will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Any questions? Any input? Remember, these are fundamentals. The simplicity of what the Word of God is. Go back. Go back and go through them. All the fundamentals. All the ones on YouTube, go over there, start looking for all the fundamentals and go through the whole series because it's going to help you. The fundamentals of God, what, what it is to be a godly man and a godly woman, how to stay saved, how to, to make it through these things. Understand, you gotta, you've got to change the way you think. Why? Why do I got to change the way I think? This is the way it is. This is, and you know what, one of the, I'll leave you with this. You know what one of the hardest things it is? Why it's hard to change the way you think? Because in order... To tell you that you got to change the way you think, I got to tell you that you're wrong. Mm, yeah. Nobody wants to be wrong, but not only am I telling you that you're wrong because I, because of this, I'm telling you that your parents are wrong and your family was wrong because that's where we learn everything from. Our parents taught us to be a certain way, our siblings taught us to be a certain way, and we grew up a certain way because this is our environment. This is what our family did. This is who we are. This is what we did. And the ones we love the most, who influenced, influenced our life the most, who gave us the heart the most to help mold us, at least the good parts of us, if they're not saved, we're now saying they're wrong. And that's what's hard. That's what's hard. You're not here to say anybody's wrong. What you're here to do is say, God, I'm wrong. Change me, right, by the renewing of my mind. Change the way I think. It's not their fault because they did what they thought. They did what they... If I told you the story of my family, it would blow your mind. But I'm going to tell you, as messed up as my life was, my mom still gave me a better life than she had. And my life was jacked up. And as parents, we try to give a better life than we had, right? It's, it's what we do. We, work, we try to get more money. We try to work harder. We try to provide more. We try to do, take more. We, we, it's just what we do. It's a natural thing as a parent. My life was a mess, but she still gave me a better life than she had growing up, which is really jacked up, right? So you guys gotta understand, we're all doing our best. Every one of us did our best, but there's always room for improvement. So it's not that they did something wrong to you, it's they did the best they knew how. It's just that they did it without God. They did it without God, right? And now you're gonna do it with God. And you'll see the change. Amen. Amen. Well, that's time. Any questions? Any input? Amen. So we're gonna end right there. Amen. Um, don't forget, uh, Sunday morning we'll be here at ten. Sunday night we'll be at the San Bernardino Church. Amen. At six o'clock. And uh, we'll be at the San Bernardino at six o'clock. We have uh, we have we have the the meat and stuff from Saturday. Uh, we took it home and froze it. Um, so it wouldn't go bad and we brought some and and everybody put brought stuff for nachos so we're gonna have nachos and stuff right now so um, stick around so we can fellowship and uh, have a little food and be blessed amen so let's uh let's bow our hearts amen as we dismiss in prayer and bless the, the fellowship so father we thank you god for this time this this time you have given us for your word, this message, God, I pray, God, that you help us, God, instill into our hearts, God. God, that we, that we would have a renewing of our mind, God. That we'll no longer be conformed to this world, God, but it will be transformed, God. God, we thank you, God, for your word and your message, God. God, I pray, God, right now, God, also, God, for this food, God, and this fellowship, God. We pray, God, you bless it, God, and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.